everyone. This is the uh, Rowley Board of Selectmen meeting for April uh, 29, 2019. This meeting is being audio and video recorded. Would you please first join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our first order of business is a public hearing on an earth removal application filed by Anthony Franciosa of Kings Oak Properties, LLC, to remove soil from 108, 112, and 110 Bennett Hill Road. I'm going to read the notice of the public hearing, which is actually a notice of a continued public hearing. Legal notice is hereby given that a hearing opened by the Rowley Board of Selectmen on April 8, 2019 at Rowley Town Hall was continued until April 29 at 6.30 p.m. at the same location on an application of Anthony Franciosa of Kings Oak Properties, LLC for a permit under the provisions of the Town of Rowley Earth Removal General Bylaw for approximately 700 yards of soil previously removed and for an additional 500 yards of soil to be removed from 108, 112, and 116 Bennett Hill Road. Also identified as parcel 39 on Rowley Assessor's Map, Map 24. Any person wishing, interested, or wishing to comment should attend this hearing. The selectmen will accept written comments. Uh, the applicant has submitted a revised certified abutters list. Uh, to cover all three lots at, at issue in this application. So uh, have we had a chance to look at that list and it's, it's uh, acceptable? We have the yeah. list. Okay, good. Okay, I'll first call the applicant, uh, Mr. Francioso Ford, and ask him to discuss his application. If you could talk into the microphone so we, everyone can hear you. My name is Anthony Francioso from King's Own Properties. Uh, we intend on uh, bringing in an excavator to remove the uh, uh, remaining 500, give or take, yards of fill that are, that are uh, on site so that we can grade our site per the approved stormwater management plan and complete our landscaping. Thank you. Um, Okay, I, now I need to read. Uh, we re did receive some comments from town boards. Uh, received comments first from uh, Frank uh, Marchagiani, the health services coordinator. He's reviewed the application and does not have any issue regarding the proposed remo removal. He recommends the company conduct in the removal be made aware of the exact location of the existing septic system components and leach field to avoid any potential impact. Um, the Health Department also recommends a contract to take all necessary measures to minimize and control dust and spoil spillage during removal. The road should be cleaned as needed or as directed by the highway surveyor. And we also received comments from Brent Baselock, our conservation agent. Uh, they've reviewed the smittle. And this office notes that previously, prior to the per this permit application, the, the applicant removed approximately, approximately 700 yards without a permit. There were some negative impacts to the roadway and the neighboring properties from that soil removal. Upon contact with the responsible par parties, fairly immediate steps were taken to resolve a number of issues that developed from that activity. The site is governed by a current stormwater management and erosion control bylaw permit. The conditions contained in that permit call for best construction site management practices to appropriately manage disturbed soils and prevent water or wind transport of sediments <clears throat> onto a budding property or onto the town's public right of way. These conditions are only applicable to land within the private property boundaries. Since there is an existing permit with conditions that govern handling and transport of soils, I would re recommend that the Board of Selectmen consider requiring uh, the applicable conditions in the existing permit be made applicable to this soil export operation extending beyond the confines of the property boundings and now covering the public, public rights of ways extending to the destinations. 
And finally, we received comments from uh, Kirk Baker, the town planner. Um, let's just try to get to the gist of this. It's not clear from the application if there's any break in the schedule for weekends for soil removal. The selectman may want to query the applicant on that if they will be conducting operations on Saturday and or Sunday, and whether there is a need to modify the weekend schedule to mitigate negative impacts to neighbors. Uh, the board selectman may want to confirm how many more vehicle trips are required to transport the remaining 700 cubic yards of material. The general bylaw requires an operations plan with a whole set of requirements. I didn't see the operation plan included with the application. Bylaw also requires the middle of a reuse plan. However, considering the applicant has stated the proposed use is for single family residential dwellings, I would consider the middle of a reuse to be unnecessary in this case. Okay, so those are the comments from town boards. Um, I'll ask if anyone present at the meeting who would like to speak on the application. Uh, if you do so, I ask that you clearly state your name and address and speak into the microphone. Hi, uh, Mark Barringer, 115 Bennett Hill Road. I have 500 feet of frontage directly across from this site. Uh, let me start by saying our number one ask is that the contractor and the town work positively and constructively together to complete this project as quickly as possible. The level of dirt rearrangement and removal for the first round lasted for a solid six months or so and presented constant dirt with uh, high levels of continuous noise all day from 7 to sometimes 5.30 from uh, heavy machinery activity. So it's great to see this being discussed. I would also like to um, add that questions were asked about how houses were going to go into this hill during conservation meetings and there was no disclosure about the vast rearrangement and removal of dirt on this site, to the best of my knowledge. Um, the process, I feel, should have brought um, this to light for discussion ahead of time. In any case, I feel that any and all future major earthwork should be closely monitored by the town. I think the builder should clearly disclose at this point what else is planned with respect to earth rearrangement and the landscape closeout plan, what that is. And I think that part of the closeout plan should be a verification that the vegetation coverage has indeed taken root and taken hold. I'm concerned that if washouts continue to occur during the process, which takes some time, seed will get washed away, leading to expanding, eroding, eroded waterways coming off those hillsides, which if you've driven by there, you know what I'm, I think, referring to. As far as additional dirt removal and rearrangement, as an abutter and a neighbor, I kindly request the following for serious consideration by the selectmen and the builder group. One, with respect to additional dirt removal, our biggest request, again, is that this be done as quickly as possible. Uh, please try to minimize the duration of time we have to listen to this constant loud noise and heavy construction activity and be subjected to the airborne dust and dirt. Uh, we also kindly request that the removal path for the trucks be someplace further down the street, if possible, not directly in front of our house, as this presents to us the worst possible exposure for airborne dirt and noise, which based on the last round of dirt removal was a serious issue that coated everything on our property with a very, very fine dust. Also, this would minimize the damage to the road uh, minimize damage to the road to the lower end towards Central Street if that was possible to truck it out down there. <clears throat> the fine dust in the area represents a health risk to everyone, abutters, walkers, workers, and anyone outside. Um, people need to recognize that it gets kicked up into the air 24-7, not just when they're doing the construction. Uh, this was very evident during the last round of dirt uh, removal. Like essentially gets turned into talcum, talcum on the street, and, and just it, it stays airborne for, you know, literally, you know, long periods of time. That piece needs to be taken more seriously, in my opinion, for everybody's concern. Along those lines, uh, we would also 
uh, asks that every reasonable and practical measure to keep the dust level down be considered, like keeping the area slightly wet if necessary, or maybe keeping the road wet, or try to work with the weather, try to do it on damp days as much as possible, and so on. Um, the fourth request is that the trucking operation be confined to some reasonable hours. My suggestion is 8 to 4 p.m. Uh, we'd rather not have the work on the weekends, but I'm willing to look the other way on that for the sake of getting it done quickly. Uh, also, I'd like to ask that they try to avoid driving heavy trucks off the south side of the street, which is a street on our side of the property. Um, the berms have been damaged, and, you know, that leads to to wash out. I'm almost done. Figure time. <clears throat> Finally, I know I'm overstepping my bounds a little bit with this ask, but it would be nice to see some small plantings or trees uh, that, you know, if they could be set into these lots there to try to bring back uh, some kind of nat the natural state, bring that back as much as possible to help stabilize the soil in the area and help stop the dirty uh, runoff water in the future. Uh, regardless of what the plans are, I'm sure in the end it will look all very, very good with the lawns or whatever ends up growing there again. We wish the builder and the town all the best at completing this project. And again, I would like to reiterate my biz biggest ask is to simply complete it as quickly as possible. It would be nice if the town would consider mandating that this, that this Form A development project be totally completed in some agreed to reasonable time period. And lastly, a little off topic, I would like to take this opportunity to simply suggest that the town officials maybe rethink how to classify contiguous Form A lot work, where site work, basin work, and large-scale earth regrading that spans across lots, as uh, that they reconsider how this is classified, as this type of activity sways more towards a development type of activity. <clears throat> This is where I think the process broke down that led to some misunderstandings about the requirements for the builder, the butters, conservation committee, and everyone else involved. Thank you for giving me the time and the opportunity to speak. Sincerely and respect, respectfully submitted, Mark Berenger. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Francioso, so what is your time frame for completing the removal? Well, obviously this time of the year we have to be cognizant of the weather. Um, as far as damp days and keeping the soil moist uh, to minimize dust, um, that's a benefit for us as well as everybody else. So we would strive for that. We're hoping that within the next four to six weeks, uh, we'll bring the project to completion. Um, we're, by the middle of May, I would like to see the fill out of there. Realistically, the hauling that we need to do uh, is probably only a, a two or three day uh, type of event. We would be Happy to keep it confined to weekdays. Uh, every now and then it might trickle into a Saturday, but definitely no Sundays. Um, uh, from a time standpoint, I understand Mark's concern. Um, that 7 a.m. time is really the time that all of these guys get going to ask them to wait until 8 might be a little bit problematic, uh, but getting them to knock off by 4.30 I don't think is an issue. Um, so once the fill is removed by mid-May, then we'll uh, get into the process of just kind of reshaping the lots. That process will probably go on while we're, we're removing the fill just uh, to make sure that we get everything that we need to comply with our stormwater management plan grading. Uh, we'll then screen and, um, and spread the loom and plant it. So in a, in a perfect world, again, by uh, June 1st, maybe June 15th at the outside, we're all loomed, seeded, with grasses planted, driveways paved. Uh, if we can, you know, we'll be planting some foundation vegetation, but um, I'm not opposed to popping a couple of trees in here and there if that presents the opportunity. Um, anything else? Um, the town planner said that he didn't think he would submit submitted an operations plan. Did, did you submit such a plan? I don't know. I don't believe we submitted a, a full-blown operations plan simply because the, the fill removal process of it is simply uh, showing up with an excavator, pulling out the 500 yards, which, you know, really isn't a, a big operation. So I, that might be something that uh, we didn't really look at in detail. 
Um, and this, the fill is going to the Raleigh Ready Mix? Raleigh Ready Mix, what, yes. What, what are they going to do with it, do you know? I believe they just stockpile it. Um, so, uh, but this, this won't include the topsoil. I know it says piles of topsoil. Correct. And there's piles of subsoil, I guess you'd call it. The, the topsoil will, uh, will be screened and used uh, as loam for the planting. So you're not the, transporting of any of the topsoil? We're not transporting out any of the topsoil, no. If we need additional yeah. loam, we might have to bring in additional loam, but um, right. But the topsoil will stay in place. Um, and I think the hours of operation, I think there's a provision in the regulation that says 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., not on Sundays, or was that in your application? I, I don't recall seeing the hours of operation. I was under the impression that um, that seven o'clock was uh, consistent with the Raleigh bylaw, but no, if it's maybe, I, I don't know, I'm not sure where I read that now. Um, I can look into that also, and if it is the case, then obviously we'll okay, your comply with the bylaw. Says seven a.m. to five p.m. <clears throat> Hours of operation: trucking. Uh, at no time shall be between oh, 6 p.m. and 8 a.m. Oh, okay, so it oh, okay. so so, starts at a.m. So we can st we'll start at 8 It starts at a.m. Okay, that's, that's fair. Right. So 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. is in accordance with our regulation. Okay, our very good. And not on Sundays. That's fine. Um, Mark, Saturday's okay? I mean... Again, there's, there's probably not more than two or three days worth of hauling out of there, so... Ideally, we start on a Monday and we're done by Wednesday and uh, just do the work right on the lots as far as, uh, uh, you know, any other grading and uh, topsoil spreading and whatnot. Are, are the trucks going to access um, the site via Central Street or Weathersfield Street? Because Central they'll, Street would be preferable. There's really no access from Central. Bennett Hill. It'll, it'll come from Bennett Hill, yeah. Well, well, from... I'm talking, will it be, which direction on Bennett Hill will oh, yeah. be coming from? Oh, yeah. Raleigh Ready Mix is right on Bennett Hill Road, about, uh, I don't know, three quarters of a mile away from the site. Right, so, so. You, so it should be Central Street. So not. it'll be central to Bennett Hill right. and then right back out. Yes. Because yeah. as you go the other way, it's, it's a, you know, narrow, winding road. With oh, yeah. No, we, we won't, we won't be street. going back down yeah. Bennett Hill. No, absolutely not. And what provision do you make for... Uh, Repairing the roadway for any damage and just keeping the road clean and keeping the dust down. Um, we've tried to be diligent with keeping the dirt off the road, whether it's uh, snow shovels and hand brooms. Uh, we've also got uh, my site contractor has a, uh, a bobcat machine with a sweeper on the front. And I've also gone as far as hiring a street sweeper out of Pelham, New Hampshire, that's come and swept the road. So, um, you know, when, when times do get to the point where they're... Uh, you know, the, the, the material comes onto the road. Uh, you, have so I, you have gravel put down to knock the uh, mud there, off of the There road. are construction entrances at each driveway, yeah. um, and we'll make sure that those are clean and operable. Um, you know, it's generally when a little bit of dirt gets stuck in the tires and they don't get up to speed. Uh, once they get up to speed, a little bit comes off. But, again, we try to be as diligent as possible with uh, making sure the road stays clean and, uh, and we contain... The, uh, the soil that hits the road as well as, you know, any control that we do have over dust. Okay. Uh, what about dust control? Well, again, dust control is just a matter of trying to keep, uh, keep, keep the soil damp um, with, the, so, <laughs> with the weather that we have right now. Right, right now it's I, not I don't issue. think that's an issue. In, <laughs> well, oh, not. I know. I, the one thing we don't want to do, obviously, is get it to a point where uh, sometimes when you put too much water on a, that type of material, it does have a little clay to it and some right. greasiness, and that actually makes matters worse uh, because it carries on to the road. And, you know, again, we're, we're trying to, you know, walk that line of keeping the road clean and keeping the dust down without uh, making a bigger problem. But uh, we'll be as cognizant as possible. Okay. Uh do board members have other questions? Yeah, I have one. I live on Bennett Hill Road, and are you going to make a repair to that water main connection, that oh, pump in the road? Yes. 
No it's very annoying, it. and uh, I travel that road at least six times a day. Yeah, I think what happened there was we had some settling and some frost that probably got under that and acerbated the, uh, the situation. Uh, but we're definitely, that patch will be either replaced or repaired to the point where it's, uh, it's a nice clean transition there and you don't have that issue. I went down the road yesterday, at, um, down Bennett Hill. I didn't uh, notice about the berms. The berms in good shape to prevent washout on the street. Uh, on our side of the property? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we have um, a silt sock in place, and we've gone um, kind of above and beyond and actually thrown some uh, some silt fence in because it seems to hold that material back a little bit uh, better. But we keep a diligent eye on that also. That's part of our stormwater management. Well, with the seeding for the, for the lawns going I'm hoping that, that we can get that seated between the last week of May and the middle of June. Again, weather permitting. Okay. Um, if there are no further questions on the application. Hi, I'm Mary Berenger, 115 Senate Hill Road. And I'll, I'm going to reiterate a little bit of what Mark said, but um, just a couple of things. I would appreciate if, like, things are done quickly, neatly, safely. Um, make sure the trucks are covered, the road is clean. Please keep the road sweeper sweeping to, to the construction side and not our side. Um, I did notice that the berms have been filled in, and that helps a little bit. Um, and. Uh, Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is when you fix the road or if you're digging again for mailboxes, or I noticed with the electrical lines, could you please refresh the dig safe flags? Because one day I was out there, he was digging by the telephone pole to put in the electrical lines, and the flags weren't there. So I think they need to be refreshed if you're going to be anywhere near the side of the road there, because there are gas lines under there. So... Dig safe hasn't been out? I, they may have been out early, but the flags are long gone. Okay. So, if you could refresh them, it would make me feel better. Um, and the other thing I just wanted to mention, I agree with, my, with Mark, that you know a lot of this confusion could have been avoided um, if there was just even one planning meeting before this um, went to form a lot or so whatever. Yeah, well, you know, a big part of that is, is a problem with the state law regarding form a lots. Um, the planning board normally has jurisdiction in, in residential developments to, to uh, look into a lot of these details, but the planning board has no jurisdiction in the case of form a lots. So, um, yeah, you know, we with do all have, that dirt removed? Well, it's just, it's just a, 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 a serious flaw in state law, and that's, this wouldn't have happened if this was a regular subdivision. Yeah, the time to address the dirt removal is before the dirt's removed. Right. Not well, that, well, that's true. That's true. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Um, I'm going to call for a motion to close the public hearing. I've got a motion. Second. Motion to close the hearing has been made and seconded. All those in favor, aye. Aye. All, all those opposed, the ayes have it. Okay. I'm going to now move on to discuss the application. I think the application should be approved with a number of conditions. Uh, first of all, I'd like to see this, uh, this project, the removal, completed by June 1. Um, I would like a condition that no topsoil to be removed from the site. Another condition that the hours of operation shall be from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and not on Sundays. Uh, another condition that the applicant will access the site only via Central Street and not via Weathersfield Street and that it shall take appropriate measures to repair uh, any damage to the roadway and to keep the roadway as clean as possible and prevent dust. And that, as uh, Brent suggested, uh, I think there should be a condition incorporating the uh, provisions of, of the stormwater management permit. Anything on this? Any further discussion? We have a motion to approve the application with those conditions. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion to approve the application is made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, we have an informational meeting. I'll prepare and I'll call you. I suppose we're going to start in four minutes, but first we have to, uh, we have a 645 appointment with uh, Treasurer Collector Karen Summit to discuss the signing of bonds. Karen is here tonight for the signing of bonds related to the school construction project. As part of the approval of the bonds, the clerk of the Board of Selectmen, Bob Snow, will need to re read a lengthy printed motion into the record before the vote is called. Karen will then circulate several documents for the board to sign. Thank you, this. You're on, Bob. Okay. Uh, vote of the Board of Selectmen. I, the clerk of the Board of Selectmen <clears throat> for the town of Raleigh, Massachusetts, certified that a meeting of the board held April 29, 2019, of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and which a quorum was present. The following votes were unanimously passed, all of which appear upon the official record <coughs> of the board in my custody. Voted that we hereby determine in accordance with General Law 70B that the amount of, of the cost of the Pine Grove Elementary School project authorized by a vote of the town passed May 1, 2017, Article 20, not be uh, not being paid by the school facilities granted twenty two million uh, fifty two thousand and two dollars <throat> and we hereby approve of the in, in, in insurance of of the notes and bonds in such amount under said law general law section seventy b further voted <clears throat> to approve the sale of five million dollars at two and a half percent general obligation bond uh, anticipation notes of the town dated May 10th, 2019 and payable May 8th, 2020 to Eastern Bank at par and accrued interest if any, um, if any plus a premium $48,700. Further voted <coughs> in connection with the marketing of the sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of the note of sale, and pr primarily official statement dated April 17, 2019, and uh, final official statement dated April 24, 2019, each in such form may be approved by the town treasurer, be, uh, be hereby uh, ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Further voted that the town treasurer and board of selectmen be and hereby are authorized uh, to execute and deliver a significant events disclosure undertaking in compliance with section rule 15C2-12 in such form as may be approved by a bond council to the town which und undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the notes for the benefits of the holders of the notes from time to time. Further voted that we authorize the dir uh, and direct the town treasurer to establish post insurance <clears throat> federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as town treasurer and bond council deem it sufficient or if such uh, procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the notes and to comply with uh, relevant security laws. Further voted that each member of the Board of Selectmen, the town clerk and town treasurer be and hereby authorized uh, take any and all such actions and execute and deliver mm -hmm. such certificates, receipts, and other documents as may be determined by them or any any of them to be necessary and conveyance to carry uh, into effect the provisions of fo uh, foregoing votes. I further certify that the votes be taken at the meeting open to the public, that no vote be taken as secret ballot that the notice stating uh, the place, date, time, and agenda for the meeting. <clears throat> we 
which agenda include the ad uh, adoption of the above votes was followed with the town clerk and copy therefore posted <coughs> in a manner conspic conspicuously visible to the uh, public at all hours in or on the municipal building that the t office of the town clerk is located, if applicable, in accordance with the alternative method of notice prescri prescribed or approved by the Attorney General as set forth by 940 CMR 29.032B, at least 48 hours, uh, not including Saturday, Sundays, and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remain so posted at the time of the meeting that no deliberations or decisions in connection with the sale of the notes were taken to execute uh, executed session, all in accordance with General Law 30A. Uh, sections 18 through 25 as amended, dated April 29, 2019. Thank you. <clears throat> Karen? Is there a motion? Does that need to have a motion and acceptance? Yeah, any, just anything to add or we're good? No, that's the first. Okay. Um, so motion. motion to sign. Second. Motion to sign has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Signed by the, just the clerk. There, there are three right. copies, three originals here oh. that I'll pass down. Okay. The next item is the note itself, which is to be signed by the treasurer and countersigned by all of the Board of Selectmen, and then it will also get the, the, the town seal from the town clerk. Uh, this was $5 million worth of short-term um, notes that we issued to complete the Pine Grove School project. These will mature in approximately one year. There's one note to be signed. Uh, the next items are items that we sign for the uh, bond council. The first one is the signature no litigation official statement certific certificate. Once again, there are three copies that we will all sign and this will also be signed and sealed by the town clerk. The next item is the tax certificate, which speaks to the uh, tax status of the notes. Uh, there, once again, are three copies of this to be signed by the treasurer and the selectmen. And finally, there is a significant events disclosure certificate, which basically says that uh, in accordance with SEC laws, we will uh, report any significant events as defined by them to our bondholders.
Okay. We done, Karen? We're all set? Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're now having a uh, joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen, uh, the Finance Committee, and the Board of Water Commissioners. And the purpose of the joint meeting is to hold a uh, informal informational hearing on the uh, special and annual town meeting warrant uh, for the May 6, 2019 town meeting. So I'll be uh, going through uh, the, the various warrant articles, and after each article, everyone will have an opportunity, if they wish, to ask a question or to comment. Uh, but I'll, I will first call the joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen, <coughs> Finance Committee, and Board of Water, Water Commissioners to order by a roll call vote of the Board of Selectmen. I'll make that motion. Oh. I'll second. The motion is made and second. All those in favor? I do. I rub it snow. I Joe Curry. I Cliff Pierce. So, uh, Clark? I call the meeting of the Finance Committee to order. I uh, call the joint meeting of the Finance Committee to order the Selection Board of Water Commission to order by Rose Hall. I'll make the motion. Okay, good. So the joint meeting is in order. Um, there are copies of the special and annual town meeting warrants in the back of the room if anyone needs one. Joe? Yes. Um, before you start, um, could I just give a little bit of information about the uh, town meeting? Of course. Okay. Um, during school vacation week, the town clerk and myself as the town moderator went to view the uh, auditorium as it has been redesigned. And we've come up with a few things that we want to make sure that the residents of Raleigh know when they're coming to this town meeting. Um, we had some incidents last year of uh, collecting of signatures and passing out of stuff. So with that being said, um, we met with the uh, maintenance and I believe the clerk of the works of the OPM for the building committee. And there will be a second shift working on Monday night. So um, they will be asked to park out back and the fire doors, which literally are, we never had before, let me put it that way, will be closed and locked so that nobody can wander through the building. If people want to see the, uh, what has been done, I would ask the building committee that sometime in August do a weekend walkthrough before school starts in September. And <clears throat> the bathrooms are in the same place. They're just a little bit more redefined. There were water stations in the all-purpose room, so you'll be able to be in there. Nobody should be wandering through the building, liability-wise and everything else. Also, there is a double door for entrance now, and Sue and I have made the decision that once you step in the first doors, you are in town meeting. So if you are going to ask for signatures, hand out anything, it will be outside those two doors before you come in to the Board of Registrars to go into the all-purpose room. The only things that will be given out in the all-purpose room will be copies of the warrant. Um, and Debbie, you said to me that there is a one-page <coughs> change for the uh, water, water department. So those are the only two things that will be there. There are several different zonings and bylaw changes, and I've also instructed her <clears throat> that all the zoning changes will be by a paper ballot. I'm not going to have people screaming and yelling and afraid to raise their hands or whatever. I know it's going to take time, but we will do paper ballots because it's a two-thirds count. All right? Um, and the one and last thing, oh, gosh, I can see it in a senior moment. Um, <laughs> the, um, we are sitting much lower, meaning the Board of Selectmen and everything is sitting much lower to the, uh, from the stage than what we were before. 
Um, there are new chairs, so they'll be very comfortable. My goal is still for one night, but it's very doubtful considering the zoning and the bylaw changes. And the uh, one other thing is that um, we now have, as you know, a screen used to come down by the back block of the stage. It is now right in the front where the curtain is. So I have asked that uh, Kurt Baker from the planning board, if he's going to put anything overhead, that he talks and knows exactly how to run. I don't want, and I don't mean it negatively, I don't want any hang-ups on any of the new general stuff going in there that we're going to lose a half hour or whatever. My goal is still for one night. So hopefully if we hit a quorum of 100, right at 7 o'clock, we're starting and we're moving on. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go through the, uh, the articles for the town meeting. Uh, starting starting at, uh, on the second page of the pamphlet. Um, what's that? <laughs> right. Uh, the, warrant for, it's the warrant for the annual town meeting. Uh, the first two articles are just deal with uh, the, the conduct of the town meeting itself, so I won't go into the, those. Article 3 is a vote to fix the annual compensation of elective officers of the town as required by state law. And so those elective officers are listed on the left, and the uh, requested amount is uh, next to each officer. Any questions on this article? Okay, Article 4 is, uh, is the general omnibus budget. Uh, it's the amount appropriated or recommended to run uh, the town of Rowley. Total amount is $20,716,842, uh, which is almost $2 million more than last year. I'm not going to go through each individual amount. Uh, rather, I will uh, reference the general categories and then if anyone has any questions about the amounts listed under those categories, uh, please uh, speak up. So the first category is general government. Any questions on that? And since there's a lot to, uh, an awful lot to digest here, if you have a, a question later on in the evening and you'd like, you'd like to go back to this article, feel free to, to do that. Um, the second category is public safety. Third category is schools. It's Whittier, Triton, and Essex Aggie. Uh, it's interesting to note that the total amount requested under the category of schools is more than half the budget at $11.2 million. Uh, public works is the next category, followed by health and human services, recreation historic, and debt. Any questions on any of those? Yes, sir. Yes, please. I'm speaking to, could you speak into the microphone? The acoustics are not great in this room. Uh, Richard Zemlack, 26 Hammond Street. I just noticed that there were quite a few very large increases in the salaries in this budget, and um, just kind of curious as to how that came about. You know, I understand there's been a good economy. We have one, two, three percent raises. The way I figured it here, I'm looking at 15, 17, 20 percent raises for some of these positions. So I'm just curious how that came about. Which article are you talking about specifically? Well, uh, or Mr. Just, Chairman. Yes. I'll, I'll be willing to address okay. that. the Chairman of the Personnel and Advisory Committee. And we've known for a number of years that our town of management officials are being paid well below what the surrounding towns are paying their officials. And this is an opportunity this year to try and somewhat correct that inequity. It doesn't correct it totally, but it was what we could afford with the increase in the meals tax from six and a quarter percent to seven percent. It gave us about $130,000 of additional revenue, which we are using to pay the increase in the salaries. So uh, it just makes it a, a, a better a more fair, equitable salary structure compared to surrounding communities. And the other issue is that we, we chronically have paying people, and if any of these positions become vacant, uh, we're going to have a very difficult time. And evidenced by the water board in particular, we've been trying, we've been advertising for a water superintendent for two, I think almost two years now. And if we can't hire anybody, we're not paying enough, and the benefits aren't high enough. So, in order to attract 
candidates, we've, uh, we've increased the salary structure, and this is the year we could do it. We've kind of, every year they've gotten about a two and a quarter percent increase, which is, hasn't kept up with surrounding communities and even the cost of living. So this was the year that we had, with the extra revenue, we could kind of even out that equity. Okay. Well, I appreciate the answer, but I believe in the private sector. We don't see raises like this at all, no matter if we're talking about a competition in the business area or the government. It just seems uh, quite quite steep to me, and I don't want to set a precedent that we're going to be seeing this year after year or every other year. You know, I see a consistent small raise doing for performance raises, something on that idea, but to me, 15, 17, I think there was one in here at 20%. That's over all the departments. Seems a little high. Yeah. I do understand you're competing with other towns. You know, I don't have the facts and figures. I just look at the numbers that I'm supplied with. Thank you. Just a quick comment, Mr. Chairman, that uh, this, what we've done is all these employees fit into the salary schedule. So the next year they'll be given a, a, a step increase. And then whatever we the board, the board votes on, whatever the cost of living increase might be, which is determined year for year. The last few years, it's been between the two items, it's been two and a quarter percent. Don't know what it'll be next year, but uh, you know, it's, it, everything goes back into the salary structure. And I, we don't anticipate these kind of races again for, for quite some time. Thank you. I just want to add to that that the, a salary survey was done for the town uh, by a consulting firm, and they, they documented quite clearly that compared to other towns in a lot of these positions that we're talking about, uh, that the town of Rowley is, pays, uh, uh, it's way below the average. And so, uh, there, you know, I think we're, the only reason the salary is this large is we're trying to catch up and make them, uh, you know, uh, fit within the average of what other towns are paying so we can be competitive in hiring people. And I, for one, don't see any possibility of these types of raises for, for a very, uh, you know, very long period of time. Okay, anything else on the omnibus budget? <clears throat> Article 5 is to see if the town will vote to uh, appropriate by transfer from the Water Department Enterprise Fund the sum of $2,148,785 for FY20 for a total amount of $2,135,285, which is, by my count, is, is uh, 181000 lower than last year. Bernie, I guess there's, there's been a change in these yeah, figures somewhat. Do you want to? transfer from the Water Department Ent Enterprise Fund to the General Fund, the sum of $67,414 for the following items <coughs> spent by the General government, uh, government on behalf of the Water Department. Those items are county retirement, life insurance, accountant's fees, treasurer, collector's fees, and an audit. And there's uh, the warrant list, a uh, Water Department revenue statement for information purposes. Article 7, to see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of 604,454,000 from the Water Department Enterprise Free Cash to the Water Department Stabilization Fund. Uh, the next four articles, are Article 8 to 11, uh, would transfer funds from an appropriation that the town made in 2016 to perform a DEP sanitary survey. Essentially, this is money left over after completing that survey. And so Article 8 would transfer 27000 from that account 
to purchase and install an exhaust ventilation system for the garage at 401 Central Street. Article 9 would transfer $25,000 to purchase a replacement mobile compressor. Article 10 would transfer the sum of $30,000 to review and update earlier work done by the Water Department to identify additional sources of town drinking water. <clears throat> and finally, Article 11 would transfer $3,000 uh, to purchase replacement, partially purchase replacement of Paul filters at the water treatment plant. Any questions on those for the Water Department? Article 12, to see if the town will vote to transfer $30,000 from the Water Department to purchase a tracked utility task vehicle. In the explanation for this, the, it says the Water Department is responsible for inspecting the storage tank on Prospect Hill and for monthly sampling and testing of water at the tank throughout the year. Any prolonged period of snow makes access to the tank to perform required work impossible to complete safety. The uh, utility uh, track task vehicle, vehicle will be available for use to other town departments in accessing their communications equipment at the top of Prospect Hill and other difficult areas to access. Articles 13 and 15 are standard uh, annual articles. They'll be voted on under one consent motion. Article 13 uh, is uh, necessary to transfer revenue uh, for the sales of light to the lighting department so the lighting department can perform its functions. Article 14 would appropriate 4500 4, from the Municipal Waterways Maintenance and Improvement Fund to account for the use by the Harbor Master in accordance with state law. Article 15 would appropriate $30,000 for the purpose of completing the state mandated recertification of all properties within the town by the Board of Assessors. Uh, Article 16 will authorize the following expenditure caps for fiscal year 2020 uh, for various revolving funds operated by town boards or committees. And those town boards and committees are listed in the article, and to the right of each board or committee, it, it identifies the expenditure cap from the revolving fund. Um, this is necessary because state law requires an annual expenditure authorization for revolving funds. Article 17 will appropriate from the PEG, Public Education, Government Access, and Cable Related Fund, the sum of $71,500 for wages and $31,000 for expenses to support cable, television, PEG access services and program. Article 18 will, will, will appropriate the sum of $63,439 from the Massachusetts Water Pollution Abatement Trust Septic Betterment Loan Program to pay the debt service on the town's loan from the Massachusetts Water Pollution Abatement Trust. We've received uh, $1.2 million from the state of Massachusetts Water Pollution Abatement uh, Program for taxpayers' repair and, up and or upgrade of failed septic systems. Uh, this appropriation would pay the debt on that loan. Article 19 would adjust the exemption amount for property tax exemption for senior citizens under state law by increasing that amount to from $750 to $1,000. Article 20 will vote to fund and implement the cost items of a collective bargain agreement between the town and AFSME Local 2905. Uh, said, said collective bargaining agreement will be effective from July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2022. Article 21 will fund and implement the cost items of a collective bargain agreement between the town and Teamsters Fire Union effective uh, July 1 th this year to June 30, 2022. 
Article 22, to see if the town will vote to uh, appropriate uh, or reserve from the Community Preservation Fund, FY220 annual revenues, the amounts recommended by the Community, Community Preservation Committee for administrative expenses, debt service, and community preservation projects and other expenses. And the, the per reason for the appropriation and the amount for each one is listed. Basically, we have to set aside 10% uh, of, uh, of revenues for the Community Pre Preservation Fund in affordable housing, in the affordable housing account, and also in the historic preservation account. And this will also pay debt service on the Brad Street Farm and the Dodge Reservation property and for administrative expenses. Article 23, we'll see if... Uh, if the town will vote to have its elected treasurer slash collector become an appointed treasurer slash collector of the town, that is appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Board of Selectmen recommends that this position, treasurer collector, be an appointed position of the town so that the needed qualifications for this important position can be required. Uh, as it stands now, uh, the only qualification for someone to uh, run for treasurer collector and be elected to that position is that they be a registered voter in the town. Uh, yes, sir. Bernie. Let me just finish this. If, the, if this article and ballot, and this has to be voted on at the town, uh, town election, at our next town election, if this article and ballot question are approved, the incumbent in, in, in the current uh, position will serve out the, the remainder of his or her term, and the Board of Selectmen would appoint the, the successor treasurer slash collector for a term not to exceed three years. I just wanted to make a, a, say a few words in support of this. Um, if people were here and they observed the um, issuance of the bond to complete um, the interim bond to cover the um, completion of the Heinz Grove School renovation, it's pretty clear that that's a very complicated process and that it's this is not for amateurs and one mistake in the issuing of that bond and we can be in diffi great difficulty. So it seems to me as though we've got a perfect example this evening of why this position needs to be filled by somebody who has a full professional background and we're very fortunate at the moment to have a treasurer who has exactly that skills and knowledge to fill that position. Thank you. Article 24 would uh, reduce the number of members on the Agricultural Commission uh, from seven to five. Uh, the reason for this article is because the Agricultural Commission is having a hard time uh, uh, meeting a quorum uh, with, with uh, the way it's currently composed. Um, Article 25 is a citizen's petition, meaning this was inserted at the request of a citizen of the town who gathered the uh, requisite or required number of signatures for the petition. The town had no authority not to include this on in the warrant, so it will be uh, voted on by the town. <clears throat> but the petition is to see if if the town will vote in support uh, of establishing a special commission relative to the seal and motto of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, the proposed commission will be established for the purpose of investigating the features of the seal and motto of the Commonwealth, including those of which have been controversial or misunderstood or are no longer meaningful to the citizens, and two, for the purpose of examining the seal and motto of the Commonwealth to ensure they accurately reflect and embody the historic and contemporary commitments of the Commonwealth to peace, justice, liberty, and equality. The Commission shall make recommendations regarding revised or new design of the seal of the Commonwealth and revised or new motto of the Commonwealth. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to make a comment. Uh, the purpose of the town meeting is to decide the budget for the town of Raleigh and to pass other budgetary or related items related to the bylaws to run the community. 
Uh, this is a citizen's petition, so we have to put it on the warrant. However, I'm a little concerned that this opens the door to future petitions on various social issues that I don't believe should be the purview of the town meeting. In other words, we have 100, 110, maybe 120 people at the town meeting. That's certainly not a vote of the town. And to whether this petition is voted up or voted down at town meeting, uh, it doesn't reflect the town as a whole. And I hope that this doesn't open the door to, but I don't care about this issue in particular, I'm not arguing the issue, I'm arguing the, the purpose of the town meeting is to run the government of the town, not to get involved in voting on social issues that uh, don't involve the town directly. So I just hope that the people notice in the future that these kinds of citizens' petitions uh, are not submitted because we can end up having petitions on uh, abortions, uh, immigration, uh, you name it. Uh, we'll be spending every town meeting debating these kinds of issues at the town meeting which which don't have uh, anything to do with actually running the town and setting the budget for the town. So that's just my comment. I hope that people will take that into consideration in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I have to also uh, add to that uh, by saying, well, I'm sure the petition is, uh, was, the intentions were good. It's not a very well-drafted article. For example, it doesn't say who's, who's going to appoint the members of this commission. I guess that probably the Board of Selectmen, but it doesn't say that. It does, also doesn't say who the commission is going to be making its recommendations to. Will the recommendations go to the town meeting, to the Board of Selectmen, or to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? So I think those are independent problems with with this, this particular petition. Um, okay, Article 6 is also a citizen's petition. <clears throat> it's a zoning uh, uh, bylaw, which means it will require a two-thirds vote. And the, the, the article is to vote, see if the ta town will vote to rezone a portion of the property off Kathleen Circle, consisting of 9.7 acres from the outlying district to the business light industrial district, and that the remainder of the property, consisting of 23.9 acres, would remain in the outlying district and shall be conveyed to the Town of Rowley Conservation Commission for open space purposes. Uh, this property is at the end of the Forest Ridge commercial uh, development. It's basically between that development and Kathleen Circle on currently vacant land. There's a, a map on the following page. The quality of the map is not good, but if you look at the map and you see the lightly shaded area, that is the 9.7 acres that would be zoned to business light industry. So essentially that would be, be, uh, would be rezoned from residential, which is what it currently is, uh, to uh, business and light industry. And then the remainder of that property consisting of 23.9 acres would be con contained, uh, conveyed to the town uh, as conservation land and included in that conservation land would be a 200 foot wide uh, buffer or strip between the land that's being zoned uh, commercial and the residents on Kathleen Circle. So that would, that would be a conservation uh, buffer that would be, uh, that no one would be able to, uh, to cross or access. Any questions? Okay, Article 27. Uh, Bernie. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, can we get a, make sure that there's a better map um, at town meeting? Because this is so difficult to understand. Um, Kirk, can you take care of that for us? Okay. Yeah, the map's not good. Right. 
you may want to preface it with what that means to yeah. you. Well, outlying is, uh, it covers most of the town and it covers most of our residential area. Basically, it's, uh, it's single family homes for the most part. Um, business like industry is one of our types of commercial districts, and it's, it, it is what it, says, it sounds like. It's uh, businesses, uh, warehouses, machine shops, things of that nature. I don't understand. Yeah, well, for you. No, it's a good question. Also, Mr. Chairman, the planning board will be available. Sure, to explain the article in much more depth than what we're doing here. First of all, first of all, put in the citizens' petition has to present it. Right. It's not being presented by the planning board or the board of selectmen. It is being presented by the citizen that, that brought the petition, that town put <laughs> certified with the signatures, and has to be second before it is allowed to be uh, addressed by town meeting. Do they understand that, sir? Uh, if, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit. Yeah, he's, it's Mr. Coughlin, he's represented by an attorney. Right. You say Mr. Coughlin. So Mr. Coughlin, if Mr. Coughlin is a resident, he will get up and he will make the motion. Okay. And the planning board is Okay. Article 27, to see if the town will appropriate $600,000 uh, to pay the cost of purchasing a 1,500-gallon per minute rescue pumper truck for the fire department. Um, this also requires a two-third vote. Uh, the cost of the new fire truck is $600,000, and the funding sources that are derived from the combination of borrowing $300,000 and, and appropriating $300,000 from uh, free cash. Uh, the, this vehicle will replace the 1987 GPM fire truck, which has a number of issues, failing cooling system, cost replaces 12000 failing emissions tests, corrosion in the cab area, and wheel wells, replacement of tires, that's maybe $8,000. Uh, if the purchase of this truck is approved, it would become the primary pumper truck for the fire department. Article 28. <coughs> To see if the town will vote to create a capital. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Uh, Chapman, uh, 316 Weatherstone Street. I have a really quick question on Article 26. Um, where would, where, where is the access from Kathleen Circle to the proposed um, business like industrial? There is no access from Kathleen Circle. Uh, the access is from the Forest, Forest Ridge Drive, I believe, which is... is a street, no, it's a commercial subdivision. It's right next to Winfrey's Fudge, okay. almost almost in, on the Ipswich line. Yeah, right. I just wanted to make sure that it was Yeah, so there is no access from Kathleen Circle, okay. and because of this 200-foot conservation strip I mentioned, there could be no access from Ka Kathleen Circle. Uh, as far as Article 27, uh, where will the new truck be housed? The new fire station. What are we going to do with our 1987 truck? Will it be housed at the old fire station? Uh, I, Chief? for one, did not know that we were going to have. Anyone else? Uh, Jim Brody, the fire chief. What's going to happen is the new truck will set the crew. We'll replace the 1987 truck. It's 32 years old. It, uh, as I mentioned uh, by Chairman Pierce, it, uh, it's failed its emissions test. It's failed, it needs a new radiator $12,000. Um, it's got a lot of rust on it, um, and the tires are uh, shot on any. They don't make the size anymore, so I have to not only buy six new tires, but I've got to buy six new rims, and that's very expensive. Um, the truck doesn't meet any comp, uh, current safety standards for fire apparatus. Um, it is old. The average lifespan of the fire truck is Five years old. Um, this one is uh, that part of the timeline. It will not be placed back in service if it's replaced. Uh, the station on Hammond Street has been closed as of today. They're going to be running out of the new station on Hammond Street. Okay. I thought the reason for the old station being open was so that there was something closer to Pine Grove. I can't answer that question. I can tell you that the station is closed as of today. Um, we discussed it, but it wasn't economic. Right. So uh, the, it's closed. <coughs> so uh, there will be no truck down there. Uh, that truck will be used probably for trading to help trade costs of the new one or to buy some equipment. Uh, the truck itself is worth about $2,500. If we're lucky. Scrap. Uh, I actually have a question. 
question while you're up here. Why isn't the fire department and – why aren't the fire department and the police station actually connected? Was that in the original plan? It was not in the original – I go back. Mr. Chairman, I go back. I'm the chairman of the building committee. Okay. And the idea was when we originally looked at the proposals, we looked at the idea of having the connected buildings and then having two separate buildings. The problem that was developing was because they're not two brand-new buildings, it was going to present a difficult proposition for construction. As you noticed and probably have noticed, that the police station is a combination of the old building and the new building. And then the fire station was a separate building. It was cheaper to do it that way. It allowed the police station to remain open for the duration of the project, and it's worked quite well, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Article 28, the city of the town will vote to create a capital stabilization fund pursuant to state law to be used for the purpose of major capital purchase in the project. So basically the idea is to put money away for future capital purposes. And we don't have a capital stabilization fund at the present. And Article 29 is related to that. It would vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $200,000 to this new capital stabilization fund. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just a quick note, particularly with regards to fire engines. The last two or three fire engines we bought, we've had to have a proposition two and a half debt exclusion to buy them, which increased your taxes over and above the normal tax rate. If you notice this time, we're borrowing and using free cash to pay for this fire engine, so we'll put the additional money on top of your taxes for an override. And the idea with this particular article is to start accumulating $100,000 to $200,000 a year, depending on what we have available for free cash, so that the next time we buy, whether it's a fire engine, a highway truck, or whatever, that we'll have the money available to spend without having to go for an override. Obviously, with all the building construction we've had, we have no desire to look for any more overrides in the next few years, that's for sure. So this is the idea of this. We're really budgeting for the future, and it should work out pretty well. Thank you. Yeah, Article 29 is related to 28. It would transfer from free cash the sum of $200,000 to this new capital stabilization fund. Article 30 would transfer from free cash the sum of $100,000 to the other post-employment benefits trust fund, which will offset the future health care costs of retired employees. The town's financial advisors and auditors have recommended that the town pay into this fund, into this trust fund each year, which is what the town has tried to do. Article 31 would transfer from free cash the sum of $50,000 to our, not our capital stabilization fund, but our general stabilization fund, which we've had for a number of years. The current balance is a little over $1.2 million, so this would increase that. Article 32 lists the number of offices, municipal offices, that are going to be up for re-election on the ballot at the May 14 election. And it also identifies that there will be three referendum questions on that ballot. The first one would be a binding question, which is what we've talked about before. Shall the town vote to have its treasurer collector become an appointed treasurer collector of the town? And the other two questions would be non-binding. The first one is should the town vote to change the name of the Rowley Board of Selectmen to the Rowley Select Board or to a similar gender neutral name? The next non-binding question would be should the town vote to ban or otherwise limit the use and distribution of single-use plastic checkout bags by retail establishments in the town? Okay, so that's the annual town meeting. Jim, on that last question, you said that the state legislature has had a public hearing regarding 
a state law on plastic uh, bag usage or banning. So um, I did talk to Brad Hill a couple of weeks ago, and he says it looks very favorable at this point, but the biggest question is exactly what are we going to replace when we do away with the plastic bags. And I believe there are only two other states, um, California and one other state, that have total bans. Um, maybe it's Puerto Rico or Hawaii, but have total bans on plastic bags. So I think, depending on one way or the other, because they are non-binding, that um, we may see something coming from the uh, State House in Boston. Yeah, or we may not. Well, we may no, not. We You're right. <laughs> not have been around to know it's a lot of uh, hype and then nothing. Happens. Yeah, right. Thank okay. you. But you're right. I think I read about that the other day. Uh, but just to point out that this um, this is just to get a general idea about how people in town feel about the general concept of, of bans or limitations on the use of plastic bags. So that's the reason for the word wording it, ban or otherwise limit the use and distribution. So, Bernie. Uh, can I ask, um, is the plan to hold um, the, the uh, regular town meeting first and no. then the special, or the special and then the town? Special. special. You, special have to, you have to clear up this year's financial situation before you move forward to go ahead and take care of the 2020. Okay. Okay, now, uh, moving on to the warrant for the special town meeting. Um, Article 2, see if the town will appropriate the sum of $6,000 uh, to pay the expenses for the annual and special town meeting. Article 3, see if the town will transfer the sum of $2,040 or, or, and another $2,270 for a total of $4,310 to be used to make modifications to the library HVAC system which will be used to improve uneven heating heating and cooling zones in the library. Article 4, see if the town will transfer the sum of $52,818 to cover a shortfall in the Essex Agricultural Technical School account. And the reason for that is enrollment at the Essex Aggie exceeded our budgeted estimates uh, we anticipated that four Raleigh students would be attending that school, uh, ultimately seven uh, students attended. So this is, would cover that additional cost. Article 5, to see if the town will transfer the sum of $18,847 to be used by the cemetery commissioners for the purpose of replacing and extending water lines within the cemetery. Article 6, to see if the town will transfer the sum of $5,000 to be added to line 66, police expenses. And this, the purpose of this uh, transfer would be $5,000 for professional development, uh, to move $5,000 for professional development where it was in, incorrectly included to the police department expenses. Article 7, See if the town will transfer the sum of $136,583 from free cash to be used by the following uh, departments for the following capital purchases and improvements. Number one is $24,200 for technology, purchasing and installing computers, software programs, and other related peripherals and technological upgrades for the treasurer collector. Council on Aging, the Library, and the Police Departments. Number two, 50541 for the purchase of uh, mobile data terminal and portable radios for the Fire Department, voting machines for the Town Clerk, portable radios and tasers for the Police Department, and a finished mower deck for the Highway Department. $15,992 for facilities upgrades, uh, a repair of the annex roof and pipe replacement replacement in the annex basement and replacement of town hall doors and windows and repairs to the exterior. And finally, $45,850 for the purchase of a three-quarter ton plow truck for the highway department. 
Article 8, see if the town will appropriate $49,640 uh, to pay costs of renovating and repairing the town hall and annex, including the payment of all costs incidental or related thereto. The cost to replace the town hall second floor heating system was under budget. The balance of the funds are being repurposed and will be used to repair a portion of the annex roof, <coughs> the front steps of the town hall, <coughs> and replace doors at the town hall. Article 9, to see if the town will appropriate from free cash the sum of $175,000 for the purchase of a six-wheel dump truck with a plow and spreader for the highway department. Article 10, to see if the town will transfer the sum of $100,000 from free cash to be used by the tree warden for public shade tree cutting and maintenance. Um, passage of this article will fund the continuation of the town's tree cutting program. Many public trees on town streets have been weakened by droughts and in insect infestations. These funds will allow the tree warden to cut or trim dead or sick town trees or remove red, uh, dead branches. Article 11, see if town will appropriate. Looking for a dollar amount here, I don't see it. Um, there see isn't if, one yet. Pardon, there is a one yet. Okay, so it's basically uh, to repurpose money that was going to the, the construction of the police and fire station for the Pine Grove School, which will reduce our borrowing costs. Is that right, Karen? Yes. Okay. Article 12, to see if the town will transfer the sum of $7,000 from free cash to pay for a construction cost estimate to build a new recycling center. As many of you know, the town recently closed its recycling center due to uh, escalating costs, but also due to the fact that we didn't have uh, our own uh, town-owned uh, parcel to run, uh, to run the center, and that, that it was creating a lot of problems for the town. Um, there is a a town-owned parcel on Route 1 that might uh, be a suitable location for a revised recycling center in town. So this article would appropriate $7,000 to pay an engineer uh, to give us a construction cost estimate, which would include survey work, site plan design, uh, etc. Um, this doesn't obligate the town to proceed with the, cons with the construction of the new center, it's just to do the, uh, the estimates and the necessary preliminary studies to see if that's feasible. Article 13, to transfer the sum of 6000 from free cash to pay the cost of conducting a town employee pay equity and, and gender analysis study. This is a requirement uh, of the newly amended Massachusetts Equal Pay Act, so something the town is required to do. Article 14, to transfer the sum of 20000 from free cash to be used for compliance with new occupational health and safety requirements issued by OSHA. Article 15, we'll see if the town will appropriate the sum of 15000 from free cash to pay for the cost of creating and hosting a new town website. Uh, for those of you used to using the existing town website, you probably agree it's, it's not user friendly and it needs to be upgraded. Article 16 would transfer from the PEG access and cable related fund <clears throat> the sum of 70000 for an upgrade of recording and broadcasting equipment at Town Hall from standard definition to high definition. Yes, ma'am. Pardon me? No. Uh, this is on Article 15. Where did the number 15,000 come from? We, we did get a cost estimate, and uh, our IT coordinator could supplement that. Correct. Uh, we, it, it has to do with, uh, came from a company that develops municipal websites, um, and basically it is the cost of setting up the website in the first year. Um. My husband is in IT and has done websites for since he was a teenager. This is his work. It's in fact, you could probably get a high schooler to build a website that's better than the one that we have now. And I say that with all due respect because I am awful at it. But it's it's 
way too much money to, to have someone build a website and host it for $15,000. That should last you five years or more. So, uh, have you talked to other towns about what they actually pay for? That? These are actually, we're one of the only towns that doesn't use a specific municipal based website. Okay. And it does, it isn't just a website, it does a lot more. Um, if you look at any of the towns surrounding here, they all use, it's called uh, Civic Plus is the name of the company. And it basically allows uh, town departments to go in and input their meeting calendars, their meeting minutes. So it's a very complex product. And you know, it, 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 there's a lot more to it that meets the eye. And if you look at any of the surrounding towns, their websites are so much better and have so much more information and access available than we have at the current time. Right, I understand that I didn't move from Ipswich to Rowley because we have a great website. Uh, it would have been nice, but that's not why. So I understand what we need. Um, and if the platform of Civic Plus is what we need, then. Um, and I guess we're paying fifteen thousand a year for a website. No, no, no. It's fifteen one, for the first year. Correct. What's the second year and on cost of hosting and changing anything? Uh, I believe it's between about five thousand. Okay. Um, any way to barter that down? I mean, it pretty much it is what it is. Okay. And we also don't have any in-house IT, so we do have uh, the county treasurer uh, and the head of in-house IT. And we do coordinate for IT with a consultant on our servers and our other uh, electronic communication, but um, sometimes have in-house IT directors that are um, full-time and they have a function of managing out the municipal website. So we, we don't at that point. So. We have to kind of balance yeah. the whole thing of what we're um, outsourcing and what we're doing in-house. Okay. And, and right now, we um, we have a modest website. It doesn't have a search function or calendars. Um, and it uh, requires uh, training in HTML uploading for the coding. So uh, there are platforms now that are a lot easier for staff to get agendas and things on instantaneously without going through HTML coding to upload it. So we're looking at Civic Plus as um, what we're seeing out there. And this um, <coughs> bills are allowed to be paid, and other things, permitting, um, you know, can be done online. So there are other features we're trying to get into that yeah. through this appropriation. Yeah, helpful explanatory note. Just thank you. Thank you. Just yeah. like to add, uh, I'm, a, I'm a CTO, I'm a chief technical officer for a uh, non-profit insurance company, and it's also some semi-government uh, agency. And uh, that's a really good price. I'm out pricing it right now, and <laughs> I might actually call them because that's lower than anything I've seen. Um, it also includes, uh, just from the work I'm doing, uh, probably a whole security aspect that we haven't even been really considered or discussed. And it's, it's behind the scenes, one of the biggest critical items right now is uh, cybersecurity with regards to that website. So that's you're right, you can get someone to whip one up, I could do it myself, but to do it professionally and to meet all the needs and the requirements of the government, that's, that's a, a tricky place. No, it's good to know. Yeah, I'm sorry. thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Article 17, to see if the town will, will appropriate from two existing accounts a total appropriation of $190,000 to be used for the purpose of replacing valves at the Prospect Hill storage tank. Article 18, to see if the town will vote to transfer the sum of $7,150 to be used for inspection and cleaning of the Prospect Hill storage tank. <clears throat> Article 19, <clears throat> see if the town will vote to transfer the following sums consisting of a total of $70,000 to be used to replace distribution main valves in multiple locations. Article 20, to see if the town will appropriate a reserve from the Community Preservation Fund fiscal year 2019 annual revenues, the amounts recommended by the Community Preservation Committee for administrative expenses, debt service, community preservation projects, 
projects and other expenses. Article 21, to see if the town will vote pursuant to state law to uh, appropriate from the Community Preservation Fund Community Housing Reserve Account the sum of $260,000 to be used by the Rowley Housing Authority to fund the renovation and replacement of 212 windows and eight roofs located at the senior housing on Plantation Drive. Uh, the Community Preservation Committee has approved this article. Uh, the Rowley Senior Housing was constructed in 1971 and represents most of the town's affordable housing. Because it's an older development, replacement of windows and roofs are required. Article 22, to appropriate from the Community Preservation Fund Historic Resources Reserve, uh, the sum of $20,000 to, to be used by the town clerk for costs associated with preservation, restoration, digitalization, and de-acidification of town vital records, which has been an ongoing project. Article 23, to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen under state law to enter into a lease of certain real property of the town on Smith Lane for the purpose of constructing, reconstructing, or maintaining a telecommunication facility. Uh, the town currently uh, releases this property uh, to Sprint. Uh, there's a cell tower located there, but this lease will expire later this year, and the town has to request to issue a request for proposals to issue a new lease. Article 24 would vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to transfer um, a uh, parcel of land located on Saunders Lane, uh, consisting of approximately 29,091 uh, square feet. Uh, from, from the Board of Selectmen to the Rowley Conservation Commission for conservation purposes. This parcel was created as a result of the Saunders Lane uh, definitive subdivision and it was identified and left uh, by that subdivision plan as conservation land. And it's, an, it's an unbuildable lot. Uh, Article 25, to see if the town will vote to amend the cemetery bylaw, the general bylaws. And these changes <coughs> would basically eliminate provisions in the existing cemetery bylaws which set the fees for lots and foundation and would instead authorize the cemetery department uh, separately to set fees uh, for lots and foundations at a public hearing so uh, they would be able to change the fee without changing the bylaw. Uh, Article 26 is a very similar sort of thing. Um, this would vote to amend the Wetlands Protection Bylaw administered by the Conservation Commission uh, to uh, authorize the CONCOM Conservation Commission uh, to adopt regulations that establish a fee schedule uh, for all filings with the Conservation Commission. So in other words, the fees would be set uh, by the Conservation Commission in public hearings and not, it would be deline delineated in the bylaw itself. And similarly, Article 27 would amend the Rowley Shellfish Bylaw um, by uh, deleting uh, the provision dealing with fees and, and authorizing the Shellfish Commission to promulgate regulations that establish the fines and penalties and fees. Article 28 would amend the general bylaws by deleting our existing house-to-house -house salesman bylaw and replacing it with a new bylaw, which uh, basically requires a permit uh, issued by the uh, police chief for anyone doing house-to-house -house solicitation. Um, this bylaw, the new one, is a lot more detailed and, and better de defined than the existing bylaw. And it also does it's something which the existing bylaw doesn't do, which is to allow someone who's been denied a permit by the, fire, the police chief to file an appeal with the Board of Selectmen on the denial. Article 29 is, is also is a zoning article. 
Um, it would uh, amend amend the zoning map of the town to create the boundary for a new uh, retail village overlay district. And this basically would pertain to the area um, uh, out by um, Route 95, by the Route 95 inter interchange. And uh, that area is uh, currently zoned for business and light industry. Um, if this new overlay district is established, um, uh, someone could uh, uh, establish a, a retail use, but there are tight design standards on that use. It would basically require the development of a retail village market and would prohibit um, ordinary uh, strip malls and big box stores and things of that nature. So it said it would allow retail uses in that area, but it would set a pretty high standard for the design and quality of those uses. Article 30 would amend, uh, another zoning article, would amend the zoning district map of the town of Raleigh by transferring the uh, enumerated parcels from the outlying district to the business like industry district, and the parcels are listed. There's also a, a uh, excuse me, I skipped over the map for this new retail village overlay district. That's that's also in the in the warrant. You can clearly see where the parcels uh, that would be affected are. Um, this next zoning bylaw, which would uh, uh, include, which would rezone uh, parcels from the outlying district to the business like industry district. Um, there's also a map on this, and you can see it's it's uh, parcels uh, along Route 1, uh, north, uh, north of uh, Weathersfield Street, and south of uh, Central Street. Uh, but the parcels actually on Central Street and Weathersfield Street that would be rezoned under this article are not included in this new district. They would remain residential. And finally, yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, this map, this I can't see. Could you come up, please? That's a retail village, yes. That's on page 14 of the warrant. Uh, that's part of the, uh, the rezoning along Route 1. Uh, that I was talking about, and they're basically the the well, there's the, the you, there, there are basically two maps for that rezoning. There's, there's the, the map that you're referencing on page 15, which is four lots uh, south of Weathersfield Street. I forgot to mm -hmm. neglected to mention that. Oh. And there's also the larger rezoning um, uh, on page 16, which is located north of Weathersfield Street. Uh, so both. Both maps are related to this particular oh, to article. Oh, Article 30, there we go. Right. Okay. Um, but there's no map from 31. Yes, could you state your name for the record? Oh, Melinda Patrick. Thank 291 you. 291 Weathers Street. Okay, our, Article 31 is a citizen's petition. Uh, it's not something that the Board of Selectmen has proposed. This would basically rezone a parcel. Uh, on the corner of uh, Weathersfield Street and Route 1 from the outlying district to the business like industry district in a sense if this is passed as well as the previous article it would include that corner parcel um, in, the, in the rezoning. This is the parcel located uh, across from the winery. It's currently outlined district. And this is a, again, it's a citizen petition. It was something the Board of Selectmen was required to include in the warrant. And I just want to point out that there's an explanation under this. That explanation was submitted with the citizen's petition. It's not an explanation that is being given by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, and so it doesn't, uh, as I stated here, it doesn't necessarily uh, reflect the views of the Board of Selectmen or the Planning Board. But the planning board has held held a public hearing on that citizen's position, and they've recommended that this petition be granted by a vote of three yes and two no. So the point that I've indicated that the the planning board is not unanimous in support of this. They're not unanimous. Yes. 
Yes, I think that's fair to say. Anyone else? That's the warrant. <laughs> We'll see if you can do that as quickly as I can do it. <laughs> Any other questions before we move on? No, we have to get out of it. No further questions? Okay. Um, I'll call for a motion from the Board of Selectmen to close the joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen Finance Committee and Board of Water Commissioners by a roll call vote. Give it that motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion to made and seconded. Roll call vote. I did. I run snow. I Joe Perry. I Cliff Pierce. Any motion to close the joint meeting between the Finance Committee? As they're all leaving, I'd like to thank all of the department heads for showing up tonight. Appreciate your uh, service to the town. And the residents. This is everything um, that's been reviewed at the, kind of the working group level um, with the, both the, uh, the superintendent and the principal as well as uh, Cliff and Joe. Sorry, could people try to be a little quiet? I think this room is terrible when people are talking. You can't hear anything. So the top sheet is the equipment list and the highlighted ones to the on the left side in the lower cost summary. Uh, the ones are the spaces that for the equipment that we've yet to order. So that is everything that is included in here um, as the backup is for those spaces. This is the remaining general classrooms, uh, the gymnasium, the OTPT, and the STEAM classrooms. Uh, these were spaces that were deemed uh, new and or um, deficient enough in what was existing to rise to the level of wanting the project and uh, the, the, the project to pay for these. Um, so this has all been reviewed. Um, and Joe and I were involved in that review. Yeah. So they were very, um, we were very selective. This is all stuff that's going to, you know, have a, a lasting life to the project and bring good uh, esteem, for example, is a new space to the whole, the whole school and it's not something they had before. So it's not like they just can move it from one room to the other. This is all new stuff. Um, to do new things um, for the education and curriculum for students. Um, <clears throat> so you'll see on this, um, the summary up on the top corner, um, the 500000 was the budget, the 
cost estimate, we're coming in at a 82.02.87 over. Um, you can see we do the math on that left side. You know, some of that the equipment was always um, earmarked to be taken from contingency because um, we knew that would exceed the five hundred thousand uh, dollars. Five hundred thousand uh, dollars. So some of that does get absorbed, as you can see, where the furniture is at four seventy two, six fifty three, sixty eight. So some of that does get absorbed. Um, so it means we're we're dipping into that contingency an additional eighty two and change. Um, so that's the equipment, and then if you jump a couple pages ahead, there's the back up there um, to kind of show what what the, pur what the purchaser order will include. And then about five pages in, you'll see a similar summary, and this is for the Phase Five furniture. This is to furnish the remaining classrooms um, and office spaces that are still yet to be built. So Phase Four is currently um, in fabrication. That'll be delivered in about a month. Um, so this is phase five, which is the upper and lower, um, kind of the east wing in the back, the, the, uh, the most recent addition of the school. Um, when that gets redone over the summer, um, the first and second stories, this, this, this list here furnishes that area. And this is the final FF&E e purchase is, of the project, Yes, correct? this is everything. This, this, will, this, this will put everything in motion, and then it's just a matter of planning and planning the dates for delivery. And coordinating the movers with uh, with uh, with Pink and Company and uh, Christina. So, it's um, the quick breakdown. If there's any questions, be happy to answer as many as I can. Just one quick question: how, how is this budget fitting in with the overall appropriation? <coughs> this is on. So I don't mean just the furniture. I mean the overall budget of the project. So the furniture um, did was budgeted at 500. We knew no, the overall budget. The overall budget is really something that Larry, um, Pink and Company manages yeah. and would be able to speak to that. And okay. I know he had some child care issues tonight, so okay, he, he, was a late, he was a late absentee, but uh, thank you. I didn't get that whole breakdown. I'd just like to uh, point out that uh, the uh, estimates we originally got an estimate uh, last fall. And then they went out for a rebid, and uh, they found that some of the items are coming in uh, priced much higher than they were last fall. And they have uh, done their work to reduce those estimates, and uh, the pricing came in very, very favorable, favorable to the project. That is a very good point, and you, uh, Cliff, are very involved in all of that. Um, I believe that I believe the number was closer to twenty um, when we sat down. Um, so we had the overage at eight thousand. So I think that's, I think, I think things were conceded on all sides. But I think the product that the, the town is getting for, for what they're paying is, is well within um, is good value for the end product. Great. Any further questions? Motion to approve. I'll give you that motion. Second. Motion to approve. Remain second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you again for uh, adding to the agenda. Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on to general business number one, which is discuss the 2020 federal census. Lastly, do you want to speak with us? Sure. Um, last Thursday night, I represent the town, the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission. And last uh, Thursday night, we had people from the Bureau of the Census come in and speak to us. And this will be just the, as the kickoff going into 2020, and uh, just a little bit of history. It, um, the census is mandated through the Constitution of the United States. Uh, every 10 years, we have to have a census starting in 1790. Um, it's very important about the census because that it's, we'll, uh, how our redistricting uh, will be handled uh, to, in every state, where our uh, representatives who, be, who will be, uh, going forward in the next 10 years. Um, the, the also, um, it also, the 600 and $675 billion at stake here that will be distributed down to, to all the states. So, um, uh, as we go forward, we'll, a number of times going into, uh, especially when the fall comes, we'll be talking more about the census. And, uh, also, there are job offerings, temporary, looking for numerators, 
and people who do the census. Um, some of the census jobs as numerators in the Boston area, downtown Boston, will be as high as $25 an hour. So if anybody's interested, as we go forward, there will be more, uh, more information I'll be able to give to you. Um, uh, again, um, it's our civic duty. This is very important that we get the census correct. Um, we, that's one reason that they had the kickoff the other night. They just wanted, you know, some people get really uptight when uh, we talk about the census because they're very afraid of, they're going to say something. Every census worker takes a pledge, okay? Uh, they cannot divulge any information that they have received under the penalty, uh, severe penalties of the U.S. government. So, um, it's just something to know. And as we go forward, there will be more information that, um, that I'll be able to give you about the census. Okay. okay thanks. All right. Thank you. Um, general business number two is a letter of resignation from uh, Conservation Commission member Kirk Turner. I read the letter. Dear Debbie and Selectman, with the age of 80, a mere two months away, and in consideration of family personal health matters, I hereby resign effective immediately from the Rowley Conservation Commission and the Rowley Community Preservation Act Committee. I know I have served on the CONCOM for over 31 years, much of that time as Vice Chairman and on the uh, Community Preservation Committee since its inception. Most of that time as Secretary, I've additionally served as the Chairman of the original Rowley Cable uh, Television Committee. A chairman, uh, a chairman of the then name Raleigh Arts Council and a member of the early days of the Open Space Committee. I've also been a supporter of the Pine Grove School as a founding board member of the Raleigh Public Ed Education Fund, in which I served for 10 years. Voluntary participation in furthering community goals has been a meaningful part of my Raleigh experience, but it's time for me to pass such opportunities on to a younger generation. I would urge others to give back and volunteer service to the town. It's unfortunate that Kurt is leaving again. He's going to fill a void, uh, create a void of both the CONCOM and the Community Preservation Committee. So, I have a motion to accept his re resignation. I'll give you that motion. Sincere sincere regrets. Regrets. Deep regrets and a um, letter of appreciation to Kurt. Second. Motion is made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. General business number three is to accept the donation of a door of door lock components from David Zizza. On the evening of April 2nd, we had problems locking two exterior doors of the town hall. David Zizza happened to be at the town hall that evening and assisted Debbie with replacing some worn out screws and other components of the lock system. Uh, Debbie is grateful for David's assistance that night and is asking the board to send him a letter of thanks. And Mr. Chairman. Just a quick, uh, David is a member of the Finance Committee, who was a Finance Committee meeting that night, and he really saved us because uh, we had problems with two different outside doors in the back of the building. And without his assistance, we would have had a real problem trying to secure the building. So he deserves a, a letter of thanks. I'll make a motion that we send him a letter. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I suppose you, you guys have it. New business number one is a water board request to transfer funds from the water budget extraordinary line an unforeseen line to water budget expenses maintenance line for water main repairs uh, we have a letter from bernie cullen a water commissioner on behalf of the board uh, the board of water commissioners after reviewing the latest financial report requests approval to transfer fifty thousand dollars from extraordinary and unforeseen <coughs> expenses to department expenses maintenance to cover unforeseen expense expenses associated with the repair of broken water mains to date actual expenses for these repairs are over ninety thousand six hundred dollars against a budget of twenty four thousand savings and other department expenses maintenance accounts should cover any remaining shortfall in this area any further comments bernie uh, Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those Aye. opposed? The ayes have it. Old business number one is to award 
an annex ramp replacement contract to Unicon, Inc. The low bidder for the annex ramp replacement project is Unicon at $61,000. We received four bids. CBI has reviewed, CBI is our architect, has reviewed the bid submittal and is recommending the selectmen award the contract to Unicon in the amount of $66,000, which includes the lattice underneath the ramp, which is similar to the ramp at Town Hall. We had estimated construction at $60,000. The board is in agreement and need to vote to award the contract to Unicon of Boxford in support of $66,000. Thank you, Mr. This has been a long and ongoing project by the staff and the office of the administrator and her assistants and myself have been working on this and gone through many iterations. The bids have been coming in very high. We've had to rebid a couple of times and change the specs. By awarding this bid, we hope to get the ramp built late spring, early summer. So it's a big step and it's a ramp that's badly needed. So I'll give you a motion to approve. Second. A motion to approve has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Old business number two is an update on the traffic light on Route 1 and Central and Glen Street. Mr. Chairman, not only do I serve on the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, but one of my other jobs is once a month to serve on the Metropolitan Planning Organization. And as the Metropolitan Planning Organization, we meet and we talk about, we meet with federal officials, the Federal Highway, and also Mass Highway. So this particular time, we were talking about Central and Glen Street. I can have good news to tell you that the project that was pushed forward by Senator Tarr and Representative Hill is now the designs phase. And it has gone to District 4. And as this continues on through District 4, I will keep you updated. Great. Okay. Thanks. Can I have one question on old business number one? How long will that take for the construction? On the ramp? The ramp. Approximately? 60 day window is what we're looking for. Okay. Hopefully quicker than that. Okay. Because it's a takedown of the old ramp, cleaning the area up, and then rebuilding the new one. So. Thank you. It's going to, it will cause some problems with the council on aging. They're going to have to make arrangements for some programs to be done elsewhere. Okay. Old business number three is assigned the memorandum of agreement with Teamsters Local 170, which has been signed by the union. We need to sign the two originals, so. I'll give you the motion. Second. Motion to sign the memorandum is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Okay. Old business number four is to sign the memorandum of understanding with the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission for regional energy planning assistance, but this item is not ready for tonight's meeting. Debbie, is this related to the green communities? Correct. Yes. And Selectman Snow reached out to Karen Kennard the day after the meeting and alerted her that we need this signed, so hopefully this is going to be forthcoming. I spoke to Karen this afternoon, the director of the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, and she will have it to me sometime tomorrow. And we'll have it to you. Thank 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 you.
have Great. it to the board. Okay. So we're going to act on it next week. Okay. Uh, oldest number five is the Pine Grove School Project Update. I uh, don't have anything new. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oldest number six, fire station, police station, project update. Yeah, just very quickly, the fire department moved into the new building today. It will be vacated out of the old building as of uh, May 1st. So tomorrow they'll be doing the remainder of their moving. Uh, with, with all the rain we've had, the, they planted grass and it pretty much didn't wash away, so the grass is turning green up there. The pavement is done. They'll be striping the parking lots uh, next week, depending on the weather. We want to do it this week, but the rain is going to keep that from happening. So basically, everything's moving along, and they're doing some minor checklist of items at the end of any project that have to be fixed or being handled by the construction company. And we're very happy with uh, the looks of the building and the quality of the construction has been excellent. And right now, it's, uh, it's looking really, really good. Yes. Association. So we're not renewing the lease as of, as of May 1st. We're out of that building altogether. And that's their building. They can do whatever they want with it. Well, they had uh, they had expressed the willingness of, at some point to give that building to the town, but they uh, later voted uh, not to do that. And so they're, they're deciding not to donate to the town. So the town has no connection with that anymore. Yep. Um, okay, we've got some antique junk dealer license renewals. Um, they are in force until May 1, 2019. Uh, we would uh, vote to renew until May 1, 2020. All light water and tax bills are current for all the renewals. Uh, there are six of them. Can we vote on one? Consolidate uh, all five? All six, rather? Okay. Um, Todd Farm, LLC, Star. P. Todd, 283 Main Street, Salt Marsh Antiques, Robert C. M. Froca, 224 Main Street, Bargain Hut Realty Trust, Judith Conley, 280 Main Street, Menzo Salvage, Vincent Men Menzo, 586 Main Street, Todd's Riverview Farm, LLC, Frank Todd, 275 Main Street, Lost Treasures, Moon Mountain Soap and Supplies, Ann Thomas, 29R Main Street. I have a motion to approve. Give that motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion to approve all six renewals that's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have. Minutes. Minutes of March 18. We were all present. Make your motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion to approve the March 18 minutes was made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Minutes of April 1. I was absent. Give a motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion to approve the minutes of April 1. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Minutes of April 11. We were all present. I'll give you a motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Mo motion to approve the April 11 minutes. It's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. April 22nd. Motion to, motion to approve the April 22nd minutes. Is it made and second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Chairman, can we approve the March 18th um, executive session minutes? Um, no. It's not in the text. No, it's not. So we're going to make a motion to approve the March 18th executive session minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion to approve is it made and second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Announcements. The Friends of the Rowley Public Library Candidates Night will be held at the library on Tuesday, April 30th at 7 p.m. The annual Friends of the Rowley Public Library Book and Bake Sale will be held on Saturday, May 4th and Sunday, May 5th at the Rowley Public Library. Uh, book donations may be dropped off, dropped off at the library between 9 a.m. and noon on Saturday, April 27th. Uh, town meeting will be held on May 6th. 2019 at 7 p.m. at the Pine Grove School. Annual town election will be held on May 14, 2019 from noon to 8 p.m. at St. Mary's Church. Motion to adjourn. Motion. 
second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it.